Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting topics. The first one is gonna be of course the results of the Arnold Classic Brazil. At this point I'm sure all of you know that Rafael Brandao expectedly won, Tony Burton took the second and third place was of course Guduito. Now, now based on the live stream, it really seemed like this was the way it's gonna go. I did think Rafael is gonna win and it's gonna be Tony Burton in close second and then Guduito. However, there is a lot of controversy surrounding this win. A lot of people are saying that Rafael was gifted this win because he is from Brazil and it was in fact Tonio who was supposed to win this show. As you guys know, personally, I didn't see it that way. If you look at this photo, for example, this screenshot from the live stream, it doesn't look like that. It looks like Rafael is clearly the most dominant here. Yeah, he lost two back poses, but that's it. Everything else seemed like he won. He was definitely the most dominating presence on that stage. He was bigger, he was the biggest guy here. He was in decent conditioning, his size was good and like with his shape and structure and symmetry, he looked like a clear winner based on the live stream. Now, after I made a video about it, after the live stream was over, I saw some higher quality photos from up close and I gotta say, I can see an argument for Tonio beating Rafael here. Now here in this shot he doesn't have the angle, he looks much smaller, but if you look at like the details, the thinness of the skin, the conditioning, the hardness, you will notice that Tonio was in much better conditioning. And we are talking about the front poses right here, because Rafael is definitely way more dominant in the front poses rather than the back poses, but here you can see, again, I would still go with Rafa, but I can see an argument for Tonio, because again, his conditioning was far superior. He was harder, he was more conditioned, and I don't think he really lacked any muscle. Yeah, sure, he's smaller in stature, but he's not really lacking anything. He's very complete, very round. His muscularity is good for his frame. How much does the height really matter? Being a bigger, a wider guy, taking more space on the stage, how important that really is? Well, that is the question. Now, from the back... I gotta say it was lights out, Tonio definitely killed Rafael in the back poses and I gotta also notice that Rafael wasn't in as good of conditioning as Ohio, definitely wasn't. Maybe it wasn't that visible in the live stream, but looking at his photo and some other higher quality videos which I'm gonna show you in a second, it's pretty clear that he wasn't in the best of shape. And let's not even talk about the back development, because in my opinion, Tonio's back right now is arguably second best back on the Mr. Olympia stage. Check it out in this video as well. So I think his glutes were more conditioned at the Arnold Classic Ohio, hamstrings as well, lower back too. I think he messed it up a little in the meantime, because he probably felt like it was gonna be easy to win this show. But I think he made a mistake, yeah, he won it, but it wasn't easy. Tonio came in freaking sharp. He was really ready, and he pushed Rafael. I mean, again, it's Arnold Classic Brazil, so I'm sure the judges favored Rafael. If Tonio wanted to win, he needed to destroy Rafael, which he didn't do. It was close, I'll give him that, but if this wasn't Arnold Classic Brazil, I'm not sure what the outcome would be. Now, Guduito, even under so much pressure from social media, he brought it, he still brought it. People were either expecting him to be like insanely good and like win this show or completely fail and turn out to be just the hype, just an Instagram bodybuilder. However, he delivered. He was in good shape, good conditioning, uh, glutes were in, hamstrings were in, lower back was great. He was positioned everywhere. He had a size as well. Did I see him potentially beating Tonio Burton? No, not really. Even though he did win a couple of poses, maybe. He had some body parts that are better, like his legs are really good freaking legs, but overall, he still wasn't on that level at this show. How much can he improve this year? Can he win a pro show and go to the Mr. Olympia? Can he win Detroit Pro in a week from now? That's something we're gonna discuss in a different video, but here at this show, he definitely brought it, he lived up to his hype, and at the finals, he had a two-man call-out against both Tonio and Rafael Brandao. I don't know why the judges did this, maybe it was just for the audience. It was interesting to see, because I'm pretty sure the judges were sure that Rafael is beating Guduito at this show. But people are also saying that they did this to give Rafael an advantage, because he wasn't posing as much, he had more time to rest up between the uh, call-outs. 
but I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, anyways, Rafael won. In my opinion, he still deserved it. If you guys think otherwise, I can see an argument for that. But whatever you felt like, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, the next story is very interesting, I wouldn't say funny because it's a misfortune, but it's still interesting or let's say curious. It's about Jeremy Potvin and some of you guys are probably wondering who the hell Jeremy Potvin even is. Yeah, he's not a bodybuilder, he's a man's physique guy, we don't cover man's physique on this channel, but he's still a very known guy and the story is interesting and I gotta say he has a pretty sick physique as far as the upper body. And he did say at one point that he was gonna transfer to classic physique, I think he started prepping for classic but then he decided to quit that and go back to man's physique, we never saw him in classic unfortunately, I think he would do well if he could bring those legs up, which he had a lot of trouble with when he started prepping for the classic physique, it wasn't going as well as he hoped, I think he could still do it but it would take him a couple of years of not competing and doing uh, just growing and like he needs to train those legs really hard and maybe mentally he's not uh, prepared for that, so he stayed in classic physique, anyways, what happened? happened to him is he tore his bicep bowling that's how it happened he was bowling and he tore his bicep let me play this for you so for those of y'all that haven't seen my story yet and saw my last post about this and the tear i tore a bowling guys bowling of all things look at wild how bodybuilders we lift hundreds of pounds but bowling We'll put you out. Yeah. Don't bowl. Alright, so he tore his bicep bowling. I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's very unfortunate for him. And in the end of the video, he says, don't bowl, guys. And uh, what I want to say about this is, his bicep was probably barely holding on. It was probably already very much damaged, and it was waiting for anything weird to happen for it to tear. And when you are in your gym and you warm up nicely and slowly and uh, you do movements that you're used to, it's different. When you're doing something uh, weird, something you're not doing every day, it can happen. It very often does happen to bodybuilders in weird places like that. For example, it happened to Antoine when he was lifting a couch and it happened to Nathan Diaz when he was playing ball with his kid. And it's not the same thing like Larry Wheel staring at uh, doing strongman training. These guys weren't doing like some crazy strenuous activity. It was simply the fact that the bicep was already probably damaged and it happened like that. So don't be afraid of bowling. You can do it. It's not gonna happen to you if your biceps are healthy. If they're already damaged, it's gonna happen uh, anyways. So yeah, it's not bowling. Bowling is not dangerous for bodybuilding. Alright, the next story is about James Hollingshead, who keeps prepping, and he doesn't even know what for. I know it sounds weird, but that's James Hollingshead, that's the way he is. Now, in this photo here, he posted uh, two variations of his back double bicep, one with his hips back and one with his uh, hips tucked in, or with his glutes flexed, uh, which is the right photo, and the left one is without flexing his glutes. And he's asking us which one is better, in my opinion it's the left one, because his lats. When you don't uh, flex your glutes, when you open up your hips, you open up your lats as well, and you show more thickness in your lower back, which is clearly the case here with James. Yeah, when you flex your glutes, you show a little bit more separation, but in his case, especially in open bodybuilding, it's not really worth it that much. I think losing a couple of cuts in your glutes is worth that extra thickness in your lower back. So, like I said, he's still prepping. Ever since he finished the Arnold UK, he didn't stop dieting, he actually kept pushing for conditioning. Here you can see him and he does look flat, he definitely flattened out, and he writes a very strange caption once again. He says, this morning, day three of the trials, itching to train, as it's been a few days now. Why is he not training for a few days? What the hell is this guy doing? Who the hell knows? I can only make assumptions, which I'm not gonna do. He's probably trying something out, trying to peak maybe, without doing a show. Look at me, I said I'm not gonna speculate, but I'm still doing it. I can't, I can't resist, so I'm sure he's doing that. He's trying to learn how to peak his body. Uh, and he actually spoke about this uh, briefly in a podcast. Uh, so I'm gonna show you this part real quick. I know I could have been in better shape. Um, sure. So yeah, I'm just kind of like, okay, let's just see what shape we can get in. Um, and if I get really sick of doing that, then at least it's put me in a, a good position to start reversing the diet and 
have an off season really so yeah so you heard what he had to say he's still prepping and maybe he's gonna jump into the detroit pro as far as his last version the Arnold classic ohio and uk there was something left to be desired his conditioning definitely wasn't good enough if you ask me it just wasn't good he was still holding some water or fat or whatever it was he was big he was massive and it was probably his best ever but could have he been better I definitely do think so, I definitely do think his conditioning could have been better, he definitely could have been drier, more detailed, I don't know if that look would look better if he was a little bit downsized, but he says he wants to get leaner and then be able to fill out more, and I think that might play out very well for him, and this is what he looked like back in 2021 when he was prepped by Patrick Tour, and I think that's the time when he was bringing his absolute best peak, he progressed in the meantime, now in 2024, he's bigger, he's a better bodybuilder, but as far as conditioning and fullness, this was him at his best. So if he can repeat this, alone this time around without Patrick, it would be awesome if he can get leaner and fill out, and if he does Detroit Pro, he's definitely the favorite to win it. He already beat Martin Fitzwater, but I'm sure Martin improved as well, good wit is looking good, so Detroit Pro is definitely not gonna be an easy show for, for James if he does it, we'll see, but yeah, he's still prepping, and you guys tell me, can he improve that much more? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and for more videos about bodybuilding, subscribe to this channel, guys, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, guys, all the best, and bye-bye.